blessed be. Today is February 24th, and it is National Skip the Straw Day, environmental holiday to bring awareness to the single-use plastics and just how wasteful the amount of straws we as a society really go through and the waste that creates. It seems very small, you know, the, the contribution, you know, a single straw, one a day for an individual user, but multiply that by everyone. <laughs> and if it takes a straw 200 years to degrade, that means every straw that's ever been made is still in existence. So that was a very interesting fact to think about, if that's true. And I'm definitely a proponent of how all of our choices do make a difference. So declining a straw a day adds up. So if I decline my straw and you decline your straw, well, that's two more a day that don't end up in the trash and things like that. Less demand, hopefully then can lead to less needed supply and let's move on to better things such as the biodegradable paper ones. They're a little different, but they work. Um, <laughs> some better than others. Not, I'm not going to discredit that quality <laughs> concern, <laughs> but still small changes and it makes a difference for each person. Uh, this week at work, hmm, back into side project mode, really excited about this. And now I'm really getting to utilize some of these processes that I've put in place, um, creating a, a project. And what I'm doing is, again, there's a different customer we provide the CAD drawings for. And so it's got its own title block and it's had its own little template, and that's what gets cycled through. Somebody else is starting it, and then I'll end up with it later on. And I talked to the person who starts the drawings, and I was like, where did this come from? You know, who's in charge? And it's like, I, you know, came from the customer, and I just used it kind of as is. I, I asked, I was like, would you mind if I took a stab at automating it and cleaned it up, making, you know, some efficiencies in it? He's like, go for it. So that's what I've been doing all week. And I've turned it into a full project. Um, what's my end goal? Um, how will I know when I'm done? And part of my process is also making sure that I'm documenting. We'll call it how I found the template. You know, all the little settings and the way they were set up. It's making me evaluate what's important in template settings. And I mean, it just, oh, I just have to comb through it. I'm using OneNote to document everything I'm finding. So I'm taking little screenshots and putting in some notes. Um, you know, like this, the compass block, you know, it's floating around in model space. And if that's going through a viewport, which isn't even for scale. And like the text for north, south, east, west wasn't even aligned. They didn't have the same justifications. I mean, it was just kind of a mess. And so I'm going to take my original company template, the one that's been built from scratch. So I call that a clean template. But I'm going to modify it for this customer. So that'll be changing the sheet size because my default was 24 by 36. Uh, this template is 18 by 24 for their title blocks. Oh, can't wait to redo that. So it's weird, it's a block, but there were, so the title block's a block, but yet the information, like half of it, 14 pieces of text and one piece of end text were not attached in the block. They were just floating in their respective places 
over the title block. Who does that? So, I mean, it's amazing these kind of things that I'm finding. And it's like, how does it even get set up this bad? Oh, that compass block. The base point was over a thousand feet from zero, zero. Now, here's a conversation I'd love to have with people to find out how you value insertion points at zero, zero. And that's just to make some of the stuff so far off. And I found a bunch of these blocks like that. I mean, the actual device symbols, um, some of them do have a normal base point somewhere in the square. But in, and again, this goes to show the inconsistency within these device blocks, because even though you've got three blocks that are squares with a different letter inside to represent a different device, they will have different base points. So one might have the base point in the center of the square, and then another one might have it center left. Stuff like that. I mean, just, just a mess. Um, I did overkill on the compass inside of the block editor and deleted, you know, like 16 lines of overlap. Just, again, things like that, making sure things are on layer zero. I am thinking about switching the blocks from by layer to by block. Uh, this way we can change the color of the blocks, maybe a little easier, of existing versus new. I, I'm still torn by that because then again, you should just have a different layer for new versus existing and you can just turn them off and on separately. But again, that's just not what this dude's doing. Oh my goodness to differentiate his existing and new. He didn't even create a new layer in a different color. He's literally just using some different system layer to get a different color. <laughs> like, are you serious? I mean, talk about going out of your way not to problem solve, but I digress. But back to all this implementation, this planning, projecting, um, I'm thinking about turning it into um, another like newsletter like I'm doing with the portfolio because I really like the way that that kind of formats and represents the project you know I, it gives me space for images and space for text to talk about the images so I could do that with this assignment you know like here's how I found it and then these were the steps that I took to modify it this is what needed adjusting from the base template you know like the sheet size but there's plenty of other functionality in there that I want to keep. So that's what I've been working on for the side project stuff. Um, I like where it's going and I'm looking forward to getting this all put together and creating something cool and impressive to send back to that first user. Um, again, I need to be able to explain how it works which is its own task. I mean, <laughs> creating the documentation, whether it's written or a video, and there needs to be something to refer back to, not just word of mouth. But you wanna make sure you're covering all the points. You need to get feedback from giving, you know, the what you've identified and then make sure you've even found the things, you know, what questions would they have that you didn't even think of? Stuff like that. So long, slow process, but it's getting there. So, one, <coughs> one click at a time. If you'd like to hear more entries into the Cat Witches Grimoire, don't forget to hit subscribe. And until next time, merry meet, merry part, and merry meets again.